In this lecture, we outline the development of a MATLAB function that matches the histogram of an image to one of four specified shapes. In addition to developing the code for the function, we also show a simple script to demonstrate the use of this function on an image. Well, in this lecture, I'd like to talk about the histogram matching project and how we might develop a MATLAB function to carry out this particular task. So what we were asked to do is to create a function called histogram match and append onto that a two-digit student number. And that function would have four inputs, s old, i vowels, type, and params. The input s old is the original image, i vowels is the intensity values for the histogram, the type specifies the type of function to match the histogram, and params would specify any parameters that might be needed for the particular contrast transformation. The output would be s new, the transformed image. Now the valid types would include uniform, where we'd like to transform the image so that its histogram would be uniform across the range of values that its intensities could take, or linear, where we'd like to have a linear ramp to the histogram, or sine, where it would look like the first positive cycle of a sine function from the intensity 0 out to the maximum intensity. And then finally, we had a cosine transformation, which would take the shape of a cosine of one cycle of a cosine plus a constant, where the cosine had some amplitude between 0 and 1, and a phase shift between 0 and 2 pi. Well, let's take a look at a MATLAB function that implements this task. So here's a MATLAB function, histogram match, and it has as four inputs, s old, i vowels, type, and params. As specified, s old is the original image, which could be a monochrome two-dimensional or an RGB in three dimensions image. It's important to note that this is actually an image data array. It's not a file that points to that array, but this is actually an image that we would input, a two or a three-dimensional array. iVals, that's the intensities at which we evaluate the histogram. Type is one of the valid desired histogram shapes. And params is the parameters for the desired shape if needed. And for, many of the, for several of the types, it's not going to be needed. The one output is a transformed image. It'll be the same size and the same data class as the original image. If the original image is double precision floating point, then our output will be double precision floating point. If the original input image is unsigned integer 8-bit, our output will be unsigned integer 8-bit. So here's some comments about the routine. If the original image is red, green, blue, and an RGB image, then the transformation will be designed to match the histogram of the monochrome version. However, the transformation will be applied to all components of the input image, and the transformed image will be RGB. If params is not needed for a specific histogram shape, then it could or could not be passed to the function, and we'll have to be prepared for that. The valid types for the histogram shapes are uniform, linear, sine, and cosine. And for the histogram shape cosine, the parameter a must be passed as params.a, and the parameter phi must be passed as params.phi, two variables within the structure variable params. And finally, for the histogram shapes uniform, linear, and sine, the params input does not need to be provided, and we'll ignore that if it is. Well, let's take a look at the code. First thing we're going to do is check for the proper number of inputs. If the type of, hist of histogram shape is cosine, then we're going to need all four inputs. So we'll look at the function output in R again in MATLAB. If that's not equal to four, we'll put out an error. For anything other than cosine, three inputs or four inputs would be enough. Next, we're going to determine the input image's class, and then we'll convert it to double precision. We're going to use its class later to convert our output to the same class. So we'll store the class of the variable, that is, whether it's double precision, 
unsigned integer 8. We'll put that into a variable input class. It'll be a string. And we'll then convert s old to double precision. The next thing we'll do is determine the size of the input image and we'll create the monochrome image if the image is three-dimensional. So we'll check the length of dimensions. If it's two-dimensional, then our image type, we'll call that monochrome if we need to use that later, and s mono will be equal to s old. If the dimensions are three, then the image type is RGB, and s mono will be the sum over the third dimension, and then we'll divide it by the number of elements in that third dimension. For in our red, green, blue image, that'll be three. Otherwise, we'll output an error. The next thing we'll do is determine the maximum intensity from iVals, and we'll provide a warning if the maximum intensity in the image is actually larger than that. Well, now we're ready to compute the normalized histogram and the cumulative frequency distribution for our image. We'll begin by computing the unnormalized histogram using MATLAB's hist command. The first input to the hist command is an array, a one-dimensional array that contains all of the image intensities for the monochrome image. And we do that, we pass that by using MATLAB's notation with colon within two parentheses after mono. So the fact that this is a two-dimensional image, it'll now be passed as a one-dimensional array. The second input is iVals. Tells us the bin locations for our histogram. The next thing we'll do is normalize that by the total number of pixels, which we can obtain by the length of mono with the colon notation. Finally, we'll use the cumulative sum function in MATLAB to compute the cumulative frequency distribution. Next, we're ready to determine the transformation function based on the desired histogram shape. For the uniform histogram, we'll take the cumulative distribution function and multiply it by the maximum intensity. For the linear histogram shape, we'll take the square root of the cumulative distribution and multiply that by the maximum intensity. For the sine, we'll take the inverse cosine of 1 minus twice the cumulative distribution. We'll multiply that by imax and divide by pi. And to be safe, I'm going to take the real part of that because the, if the arc cosine gets out of the interval negative 1 to 1 because of some kind of rounding error, we'll get an imaginary number. And finally, for the cosine, we'll first set up the two parameters, a and phi, and then we'll implement a rather complicated function that solves a nonlinear equation for x. And once we find that solution, we'll multiply by imax. Well, regardless of the type of transformation, we now have an array T that has the same number of elements as the intensity array iVals. And because we've assumed that iVals represents all possible image intensities that our original image can take, we can subtract the minimum of iVals and add one from each intensity in the original image, and then we'll have an appropriate index into the transformation array. And after forming the transformed image, we need to convert it back to the same class as the original image. To do that, we use the MATLAB function cast to change the class of snu to the class of our original image, which we stored earlier in the string variable input class. If our original image, for instance, was double precision, we'll retain double precision. If our original image was an unsigned integer with 8 bits, our new image will have unsigned in integer 8 bits for its class. Well, now let's take a look at a script that I wrote that'll allow me to read an image and test out my histogram transformation function. Well, I begin by reading an image, and I have that image stored in a particular directory where I'm keeping all of my images. So I'll just set up a string called the image file, and then I'll read that, and I'll set iVals from 0 incremented by 1 to 2 to the 8th minus 1 because this is a JPEG image and I can safely assume that it's going to have unsigned integer 8-bit intensity values. Next thing I'll do is set up a figure. When I set up the figure, I'd like to put its position something different than the default because I want to display two things inside of this figure. And the way I'll do that is I will, after I set up the figure, establish figure 1, I will set, and the GCF means get current figure, and I'll set the units to normalized, so now I can set the position to normalized position units, the first, 
point 0.1 tells me that I want to go 10% in the x direction in my screen. Point 0.2 tells me I want to go 20% up in the y direction. And then I want my, from that point, I want my figure to be 70% of the screen's width horizontally and 70% of the screen's width vertically. And then I want the background color to be white. Then I'm going to compute the histogram, the normalized histogram and the cumulative frequency plot for the original image. And I've written a function called image histograms to do that. But I do that in the same way that I do it within my histogram matching program. And then I'm going to make a subplot. I'm going to break the original plot into two rows and three columns. And the way those will be numbered is the upper left is the first image subplot moving across the top. The next is image subplot 2, then 3. Then in the next row, it's 4, 5, and 6. I'm going to take regions 1, 2, 4, and 5. That is the four regions on the left side. And I'll use all those to display my image. And then I'll take subplot. Again, two rows, three columns, and I'll take the third element, which would be the upper right, and that's where I'm going to put a bar plot with the intensity values on the horizontal axis and the normalized histogram on the vertical. And then I'm going to adjust the axis so I only see from the minimum of i vowels to the maximum of i vowels, and I go from zero on the vertical axis to 20% larger than the maximum the maximum normalized frequency. And that'll be the histogram of the original image. And I'll pause. And then if I press the return key, I'll be able to carry out the next plot. And the next plot be very similar to the ones that will follow, very similar to what I had just done. The biggest difference is that instead of the original image, I'll now transform the image through my histogram matching program with a uniform shape. And after doing that, I'll do linear. And after that, the sine. And after that, the cosine. And for the cosine, the parameter a will be 0.9. And the parameter phi will be pi over 2. So let's take a look at those. Well, if we run that script, the first thing we'll see is the original image and the original image's histogram. And after that pauses, if we press return, We'll now see the original image after it's been histogram matched to a flat histogram along with its histogram. And here's the image when we try to match its histogram to a linear function. Here's what happens when we match the histogram to the sine. And here's what happens when you match to that cosine that has a phase of pi over 2, which shifts it about a quarter of the way across the intensities and gives it quite a bit of peak to trough because a is equal to 0.9. And there you go. I hope that I hope that helps as you try to develop this particular function and others throughout this class.